Just keep it above my waist. Can we please skip leg day? Oh, you're not a leg guy. No. Let me look at these, Laura. You know, these are already perfectly sculpted. What would you change about them? I <laughs> Nothing. All my problems are waist you're up. Good. Okay, so last time I saw you, it was day 19, which means we have some catching up to do. I had a pretty good weekend, like on Saturday, day 20, I ran for about 45 minutes in addition to having some fairly balanced meals. I also had two apples in one day, which I feel should be celebrated, plus I had a lot of protein and vegetables. And then on Sunday, which was day 21, I definitely ate too much. I started the day well and was even tracking my food, but then the wheels fell off the wagon as the day went on. On day 22, I was back in the gym with Laura, but something terrible happened which is that Chris did not show up because he was vomiting. Saturday night, uh, I had a lovely dinner with John and his family and his father-in-law and mother-in-law, Connie and Marshall, lovely people. Uh, had a delicious plate of meat. And then the next day, uh, my wife was gone. And the next day I'm uh, spending, just being a hands-on dad with my children, you know, engaging them in games and riddles and books. It hit me, and I thought, "Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw up." And lo and behold, five minutes later, I went and I threw up. And it turns out I had. I'm not blaming it on the food. I think it might have just been a stomach flu that I had because I really do like this restaurant. So I was just knocked down with kind of fever chills for the next 36 hours, and uh, came back like five pounds lighter and uh, ready to attack. This is a very good excuse, and I want to take this moment to thank him for not sharing his norovirus with me, but it did mean that I had to work out by myself, which kind of sucked. Laura had me start out on these rowing machines. I would row to 100 meters, then take a break, then 200 meters and take a break, then 300, then 400. I'm so much more fit than I was three weeks ago. Are you joking? Are you no, I'm serious. That's awesome. That, 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 15 seconds. It's not hard. Well, pull it harder. <laughs> <laughs> and looking back, I maybe shouldn't have bragged so much about my impeccable fitness so early into the workout, but remember those two apples? I had reasons to feel confident. Anyway, then we moved on to some suicides and some ab work. Laura calls this move a get up. It was the first time I'd done it, but spoiler alert, it is not the last time you'll see it in 100 days. That's no joke. All right, Ooh. guess what? Count suicides. No, really? The same thing? It was right around here that I realized this workout was going to be a little harder without Chris, partially because Laura kept telling me that this workout was going to be a little harder without Chris. I told them before you got here, this is going to be a rough one for you being here by yourself. You can thank Chris. You'll send him by himself sometime. Oh, Chris. <laughs> and this one. What the f is this? <laughs> Explain to me what this has to do with functional fitness. Is this for if you're pregnant with 17 babies? And you need to pull up in a car door, and I gotta do this. And I'm gonna open the door. And open the door. Hardest I've ever worked to look so stupid. Oh, that has to be it, right? Oh. Afterwards, it was back to ab work and my new friend get-ups. In fact, we did most of the things on Laura's list twice. I'm really not a fan of these squats. You're supposed to go slow on the way down, then quickly up, then you switch to quick on the way down and slowly up, then you do them quickly both down and up, and then slowly both down and up. Basically, I hated them. And because I hated them, your homework this week is to give them a try and then commiserate with me over at the community tab. Because like a lot of exercise, I found that while I hated these squats while they were happening, I was very grateful to have done them. Eventually our hour-long session on day 22 came to an end. I have to say that working out without Chris sucked. It's so quiet without Chris. I miss Chris. Oh my god, it's so much easier with Chris. Oh, Chris, you're really missing out right now. I know he's sick, I know he wouldn't fake it. Still. It kind of sucks for me though. I hated it. It's much harder to motivate myself. I also couldn't take little breaks when Chris was doing a more difficult part of an exercise or when he was making a joke. I've really come to count on those breaks for Chris jokes. But also, I didn't eat well the day before, and I think that has a huge impact on how I feel when I work out. Oh, it's the candy. If I hadn't had the candy, I'd be fine. So as tough as it was, it also reminded me that I have to fuel my body better for this stuff. So I had a very healthy lunch and dinner and some healthy snacks. Day 23 brought a 6 a.m. indoor cycling class at InCycle in Carmel, Indiana, which was led by Carmen. Sadly, Chris was still pretty sick. You know, there's been some great disappointments in my life. The 2016 presidential election didn't go how I was hoping when I was 
10, I found out there's no Santa Claus. But when I couldn't go to indoor cycling at 6 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, <laughs> I, uh, I, I didn't see a lot of reason to go on. <laughs> But Laura joined in for the class and it was great to have that moral support because as I learned very quickly, these classes go fast and there's a lot of lingo to keep up with. We started slowly though with some stretches. Kind of like Todd's boot camp workout and most of the workouts that we're doing, this one involved getting our heart rates up high and then taking it slow for a while and then getting our heart rates back up. We did that by adjusting our RPMs, revolutions per minute, on the bike. So to start out, she had us pedal at around 100 RPM and then we dropped down to a jog about 80 RPM. And here we approached our first hit. Now, in addition to this being very difficult, everyone except for me seemed to be pedaling on the beat. The same goes for when we were using these weight bars. Speaking of which, an essential part of indoor cycling is the very loud, fast pop music. Like at one point, Carmen posited that Bruno Mars would get anyone's spirits raised at 6 in the morning, which is kind of hard to disagree with, and it's too bad that Chris missed this one because he is a huge Bruno Mars fan. Oh, and here we are doing a sing-along to Ario Speedwagon, and by we, I mean they, because I, I did not know the words to this song. I could clap along though, slightly off the beat. Of course, you can't hear any of these songs because we can't afford to clear the rights, I'm sorry. So we did a couple more hills and then we did weightlifting. I remained off beat. I did find it pretty amusing that Carmen went around the room taking selfies with people. It was like a 6 a.m. party. And the end solidified that. Carmen had us clapping and grooving. It made me feel a little bit self-conscious to be honest, but I'm not gonna lie. It was a great workout and I enjoyed this cycling class. I do rather wish that it hadn't happened at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's a little earlier than I like to be getting up to my max heart rate. Also, the people were lovely and it was really nice to see Laura sweat for once. For the rest of that day, my meals went pretty well. I'd like extra credit for this avocado on toast with cantaloupe, please. And we don't have pictures of Chris's food because, well, he didn't eat much. I do want to say a special thank you to Chris, however, for not photographing his vomit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on day 24. Whoa. Oh God. Who do I have to pay to get 103 degree fever so I can go to bed? <sighs> 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 God.